Hi, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. So, I said my name is Jorge Valdez. Uh, I've been living in Puerto Peñasco for 28 years. And um, my professional background, I have two careers. I have the career in business and the career in law. I study, I studied both careers. So I spent 10 years in, in universities. I studied uh, here in Puerto Peñasco in Guadalajara and also in the, in the state of Ohio in the United States. So that's basically my, my uh, professional background. And I've been working since the beginning for, with, uh, in everything related to real estate. Uh, I started with the working for developers, for large developers. And uh, so I understand very well all the processes from zero to, to develop, to subdivide, to, to get all the permits and then until you sell a condo and all the process that, that is, it gets involved. So I, I know very well that, that, that uh, process. And, and another thing that I, I see sometimes a, a, a difference or a plus in, in, in my side or in my office is that I, I have, a, have a lot of knowledge in the taxes side. So I, I, I have, because of my career in business and my first years of experience working with developers, uh, so I, I, I understand very well all the real estate, uh, taxes involved, and, and obviously because we always try to get the best, uh, the, the best tax, uh, taxes, the benefits for, for clients, uh, getting all the tax deductions that they can do, and so to reduce, obviously reduce the capital gains as much as possible without being out of the, out of the law. I mean, don't having don't putting our, our clients on, in in trouble, but obviously reducing the the taxes and capital gains as much as possible. Yes, even that the for example the the the, the capital gains are calculated by the by the notary public because they are the responsible to to do the issue the final number for capital gains, collect the funds, and they pay to the Mexican government the, the capital gains. But if, even that the, they have the last word. I get very involved with them in uh, being sure that they take all the clients take all the credits and tax deductions that are allowed by by the law. So I, I get I got involved in all that process, and obviously that's something that benefits my clients. And we don't I like for, I don't charge an additional fee for the taxes. I mean I just use my knowledge to do both the legal and the tax side and in benefit of our, of our clients. Okay. And obviously, we also advise our clients on how to, how to get title now, thinking in the future to avoid that in the future they're gonna be hit so big for, for capital gains or things like that. So we do like a, a tax planning for, for future. That's something very important because I have seen, I have seen documents, titles of trust from attorneys that maybe they don't have the knowledge on the, on the taxes, because then they did they do all the legal side correct, but they don't they didn't take care of the tax side. So then eventually the clients are hit by huge capital gains. So that's something that uh, we take care of here in, in our office in real consulting. Uh, uh, we also have here in our office uh, an, an accounting department because we do accounting and legal in, in the same office. We also do immigration services. And here in our office, we have uh, Gabby, which is a, the experienced accountant with more than 20 years of experience. We have Alexis, which he has a master's in, in taxes. So we have the experience of different people that can help us uh, do the right thing with, with, with our clients. What? The main problem is the timing. <laughs> we cannot, we are trying to do the process has I mean, expedited as much as possible, but uh, since the COVID restrictions plus many things that has changed in the in the last uh, two years, so it it takes so long, and that's sometimes the the problem that we face we're facing right now. Uh, that we 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 try to give our clients an estimate timing for to get to, for them to get the trust. But I mean, sometimes it's impossible. I mean, is there are too many offices and entities involved, and 
everybody is taking longer than before. Everybody, besides also because of the amount of work that we have in last year and this year has been very busy. So, but also because of all the COVID restrictions and everything, is everything is taking longer. So that's maybe the main problem that we have right now, that timing. Yeah. Basically, it's in, in all stages of the, of the process. But for example, the first step to get to set up a, a trust is to get the permit from the Ministry of Foreign Investments. And that was a process that usually before you, I mean, there was, it was done uh, personally, but somebody in Mexico City, we have people there in Mexico City that can just walk into the offices and get the permit. Since COVID, now everything is online. Sometimes the offices are open, sometimes they close. So that's that's the first that was the first uh, part of the process. Maybe that was a process that will take three four days. Now maybe it takes three weeks. That's that's the first one. Then second, the notaries. Uh, maybe they are also taking longer because maybe I I would say because the market is so active, so they are so so busy. The amount of work that we all have, so that is taking longer for them for the notaries to, to also complete the, the process. One of the, of the offices that is affecting more the, the, the timing is the public, uh, public records office, the office of public records of the state of Sonora, because uh, again, they closed it because of COVID and now they have been having problems with the people there working. I mean, they, I think right now since October, they've been working with only one person there. So it's, it's crazy. Uh, let's say to get a certificate of no liens that we needed for the trust to, uh, uh, before it was a three days process. Now it may be a three months process to just to get that. But we need to set up an appointment on the public records office just to go get the document. And the, the appointment takes six to eight weeks to get it. So. It's, it's been very challenging and difficult that 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 part. Yeah, the, uh, well, now that you said that the banks also has been one of the entities that is taking longer. Uh, some banks maybe because the amount, the volume of work that they have, but others because they've been doing like changes. Some banks that they have an office maybe here in Sonora before, and now they are centralizing everything to their main offices in Mexico City. So it takes so long to get an answer from answer from them. So all those uh, uh, problems with different entities, at the end, is it takes uh, a long time to get the, the 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 trust. And obviously, because we are trying, how we are solving that? We we are we are doing it with uh, closing with a private contract. We call it a bridge contract. And obviously, for example, to be able to, so we can continue with the process without the sellers needed to sign anymore, because if they're gonna be paid, we don't, we, we can need to have the control that we be able to sign sign off at the, at, uh, when everything is ready. So that's part of the uh, way we are doing it to solve that problem. Yeah, because right now, maybe a trust is gonna take you six months, and uh, so obviously you don't want to wait six months to purchase a property, as you know, so people want to close right away. So that's the way we do it, getting a power of attorney from there. So we do because the seller is going to be paid up or paid, or maybe sometimes we have a, a retained amount to the end until all the paperwork is complete, but the seller is going to receive most of his, uh, the price uh, up front. So in order to protect the buyer, that's because we request the, the power of attorney from the sellers. We, in the case, we get into our office, so we we can continue with the process. And the sellers, they don't need to come back to Peñasco if they don't want to any, anymore. And yes, obviously, that's the first that we, the first thing that we do in any, in any transactions, we review the title, be sure everything is correct with the sellers' uh, trust with the sellers' title. And obviously, we re, we review in the public records office that there is no any any liens or then nothing that may uh, avoid the property to be to be sold so that we check all the records and also in the in the city be sure the taxes are current etc and uh, and then obviously we we re we request a certificate a certificate of no liens 
which also is going to be included in the in the in the trust. Uh, so in the in the process, even that we we can check online that the property is free and clear. Anyway, we request the certificate because that, that, give, that give us the the how can I, how can I say it? to be sure that the the the, 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 the records public records office issue a legal document showing saying that nothing is there's no problem the property has no no links so yes the you need inscription number which is really is in the very last page of your trust you want to see it's a, a it's a last page that is usually attached there in the in the in the back cover of your trust and then you have the inscription number and with that you can go online and check and check uh, the, 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 the property is free and clear but really we need a legal document from the public records office also. Okay, that people that that had a mortgage on the property and they paid off the mortgage but they never cancelled the actual mortgage once you paid off the mortgage you need to do a process to to modify the trust because uh, Right now, the, the mortgage company is on first place, it's like a trustee on first place, and the, the actual the buyer, the client, is on second place. So once you paid off your mortgage, you need to, to cancel the mortgage to be the, so the, the, the trustee on first place would be the, 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 the seller in this case, or the, or the owner. Uh, that's maybe one of the most uh, common problems that we face, that people think that once they pay the bank, they don't have to do nothing else, but no, they 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 need to modify the, the, the trust to cancel the, the mortgage. So that takes us, it's like a two two closings in one because we need to do the two process and and, and it takes longer to do it. So I, I would say that maybe exactly. So when if you have a mortgage, then the, my advice is that as soon as you pay it up, do the do the cancellation of the of the lien right right away. So you know it, you you will avoid problems in the future, but some lenders may be out of business or the banks or that's then we need to look for somebody, a legal representative from each bank or each lender to 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 cancel that that uh, mortgage. So it's it's important to do it right away. Since you're paying right there, they they will sign off uh, easier, I would say. Yeah. And um and then like and then maybe another problem you won't believe it but that people that they don't have the trust and they don't have a, a copy and so even that we can get a copy from the public records but the same problem that we have right now with it is is really hard to get a copy so it's important for them to have a a copy of, a complete copy of the trust and and if they can and send us a copy complete complete copy because we need to read some people they sometimes they send us only oh that, let me send you know, the three or four pages but now we need to, to review different aspects different a lot of details in the, in the trust so we need a complete a complete copy. So i think another advice that i will give to to the people from thinking or selling their property uh, is like to get an estimation of the capital gains calculation of the capital gains so they have an they already have in, in mind they know and they have an idea of how much they're gonna pay because then there's surprises you know people think that think that they are not gonna pay and when you say no you need to pay these capital gains so they it's a surprise for them you see in the problem in mexico is that the transactions even that you sell or buy in dollars the transactions uh, for capital gains are recorded in pesos at the exchange rate or when you bought it. So that's a, there's, there's, there's a problem for a lot of people. I have seen, let's say, let's say a person that bought a, for a hundred thousand dollars a property in, no, no, I don't know, in 2012, but the exchange rate was 13 pesos, right? So it was 1.3 million pesos. It was the, the equivalent. Now they are selling even even if you sell for the same a hundred thousand dollars, but now the exchange rate is twenty, so now it's two million pesos. So you have a profit in peso, pes pesos to pesos, you have a profit, and 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 fortunately, you need to pay capital gains, and that's a surprise for the people because they say, nah, I I or some people that is even losing money. They say, I yeah. I pay one hundred and fifty, now I'm selling for one hundred and twenty. Why am I paying capital gains? Yeah, and that's because of the difference on the on the exchange rates. 
So that's yeah, that's, it's, that's yeah, sure. Uh, any any time, just yeah, I would need a copy of the trust and a an, uh, price they have in the uh, idea uh, in their mind of how much they want to sell it for, and with that we can we can get an uh, capital gains uh, estimation. So they they have that clear since the beginning, and sometimes that gives us time also to to prepare to some documents that we need to reduce the capital gains to to take some tax deductions. That also, but because also it's important to do it when you lease your property, because sometimes when you wanna, you have the client ready, you wanna close in 30 days or 60 days, there's no time to do some paperwork for, for to reduce the capital gains. So that's another reason because I would advise to get an estimation upfront when you, when you list your property. And obviously we can, we can help you. Jorge, how can, uh, how can our clients get a hold of you? Okay, but my my the, I think the easiest way to reach me is by email. My email is Jorge J O R G E at realconsulting.com.mx. You can also find our webpage, it's the same realconsulting.com. And uh, or I have a US uh, a phone number 602 412 3598. They can also give me a give me a call.